Remember when you were a teenager? Remember all that homework? And those classes? And the fights with your friends? And all those chores? Kids in West Africa go through the same thing, but when their life gets tough, they can turn to their parents for help. But a lot of kids don't have a mom or a dad. Especially here in Otukpo, Nigeria. It's home to thousands of kids who have lost their parents to HIV. For the last five years, Abel Adole has been the man of the house. He's been the father, mother, guardian, and just about everything else for his four siblings. Abel worked like you wouldn't believe to keep the family together. He spent hours farming cassava. He worked on neighbors' farms. During this time, he managed to keep himself and his siblings in school. He even graduated with a diploma in statistics. But they just barely got by, and they often didn't have enough to eat. These kids are determined, and they're not afraid of hard work. You should have seen the effort Andrew put in just to prepare lunch. He was soaking wet by the time he finished. To earn extra money, Abel crushes rock. That pile there, which was three hours of work, will bring him about 70 cents. CRS gave Abel more than $400 for an Okada. That's what they call motorcycle taxis here. He makes just enough money to keep the family going. But still, trying to feed six mouths on a few dollars a day takes a toll on Abel. But spend some time with him and you quickly realize something. He's still a teenager. He really likes taking pictures. I even gave him my video camera and he loved playing with it. He has two dogs, a little mutt named Danger, and a female whose name sums up Abel's life, Money Hard. But for such a young man, he knows when to assume the role of a parent. He eats the leftovers, he feeds the youngest one, he even goes hunting with his dad's antique rifle. But the thing that got me, that just blew me away, was that this 20-year-old orphan adopted one. And, and beside me is an Oche, Emmanuel. He's an orphan outside my siblings. And as a cause of the help of the CRS, I decided to raise him or to sponsor him in his fees and every other things. Because since the CRS are helping me, I promise them that I will help another orphan outside my own um, family. Annie's not even sure how old she is. She just knows that her childhood got cut short. When her mom got sick in 2002, she slowly took on the role of the mother. She was the one who bathed her. When she died, Annie took over her job selling moi moi, a kind of Nigerian bean cake. She dropped out of school to take care of Mary and Innocent, her sister and brother. When her dad died in 2006, she went from being a sister to a parent. She was forced to figure out a way to make ends meet. But she doesn't want to talk about that. She doesn't want to have to think about what she went through. Besides, she's got enough on her mind as it is. A crumbling house without electricity, gossipy neighbors, and a daughter with health problems. There's only one constant in her life, this woman. If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. Mrs. Olga is a relentlessly cheerful woman. <laughs> I spent several days with her and I never saw her in a bad mood. That's kind of surprising since she's constantly bombarded by people asking her to enroll kids in CRS's program. She tells them that there are already 2,000 orphans and children in severe need in the program. The best she can do is take their names down and hope spaces open up. Mrs. Oga says that some kids, like Anne, are in pretty bad shape when they're discovered. They were eating once, or at times they go on empty stomach before our identification. They faced a lot of challenges. People were rejecting them. 
What amazed me was that with a small gift of only $35 from CRS, Annie's life has completely turned around. She bought some beans and a pot to steam her moimoi in. And a second allotment of money meant she could buy another pot and double her income. With moimoi selling at seven cents a tin, volume is what's important for Ene. Ene told me she'd love to get married one day, but the men around here aren't marriage material. They're more interested in bugging her. She said she has few friends. Most people don't come around anymore. But I know of one, and she's not going anywhere. Before I left Nigeria, I met one last group of kids. You wouldn't know it by looking at them, but all of these girls are orphans. But so what? They just want to be teenagers. Yeah, I'm not